All right, welcome to another meditative experience. I am Esther, your host. Feel free to take a moment to make yourself comfortable. Pay attention to your body and ask yourself if there's anything that might feel a sense of discomfort and if you can adjust accordingly to serve that space so that you can relax into this process. I always encourage a warm drink on our Friday morning practices and feel free to settle in. We'll begin with our first inhale here. You can gently seal the lips. Inhale through the nose, really going at a slow pace, filling the chest and the abdomen area, inviting yourself into your first home, which is your body. When you get to the top of that breath, I want you to relax there for a moment and then inhale just a little bit more to expand into a sense of fullness. And then you can softly exhale just as slow as you inhaled. Really relaxing into the exhale, melting into this supportive space. Taking another inhale here, this time relaxing the eyes and the ears, softening the fingertips, and filling that internal space again, being as generous as you can with yourself this morning. Tapping into that sensation of fullness and abundance. And softly exhaling again. Allowing whatever is coming up to lift as if it was a second skin in the exhale. We're going to do one more round before we go back to our natural breathing rhythm. Inhaling through the nose, softening the jaw, softening the hips and the knees. Noticing how intentional wholeness is including anything within you that is ready to be part of this practice and then beginning to soften here again and exhaling Noticing if your heartbeat is present or noticeable. When you are in this relaxed state. Inviting quiet and space into this space. And as we go through these inhales and exhales, the exhale is a space where you have permission to let go.
tapping into the sensation of letting go rather than the ideas of letting go. So rather than thought, we are tapping into sensation. So if I ask you, what would letting go feel like? Notice where you feel it in your body and what needs to happen in the movement of exhale for letting go to be present. When we work on the inhale, it's the same concept. When we inhale, What we're trying to do is inhale clarity, space, rather than clutter. For a lot of us, we are obese in our thinking. When we think about abundance, we think of a lot of stuff. We want to take it all in as if it was a meal with the calorie count we can't afford. And we struggle with digestion like dreams and ideas of having more money than we can actually know what to do with. Why is that conducive? Why is that where we go? And the reason is when we are not present in our body and we're not aware of the space available, it is difficult to understand what fits into the space. Going back to abundance, abundance is attached to clarity, to openness, to flow, to expansion, to movement. If I ask you, if you think of abundance from an emotional aspect rather than a technical or a mind kind of a dream or a fantasy, back to sensation, like with the exhale, what does abundance be like to you. Notice as I was speaking, if anything tensed up, our body reacts to words and thoughts, comfortable or uncomfortable, it reacts. So adjust accordingly. You can drop the shoulders here. Readjust if you need to. Encouraging comfort within. Notice if your breath changed. The rhythm in itself. Just come back to that flow. Center. So back to the word abundance. What are the sensations that come up with that? What is the experience of abundance? And actually it's difficult to invite abundance in when there is so much clutter of the mind. Think about now a physical thing that you desire 
and meet it with this emotional set, sense of abundance and ask yourself, do the two fit together? And usually the answer is no. The thing you think will give you the sensation of abundance actually will eliminate the abundance. A simple tweak here is in, in Judaism or in a spiritual practice, a lot of people see sense of limitation as a restriction rather than the less you invite in, the more you can be present. And obviously we're talking about a healthy practice and when it's met in an accurate manner. But when we do this kind of practice, we can understand it more. That the combination of who we are is, has to be tapped into all three parts of ourselves, which is the mind, the body, and the soul that they're all important. But the beauty of the way we are created is there's a sense of heart center. This guiding light, which is attached to feeling, which is attached to intuition, where we can notice when something doesn't feel right. We will usually say, I don't feel right, or this doesn't feel right, rather than I don't think it is right. And sometimes we're not sure what that is, but it's more of a gut feeling. And the beauty is, is that our spiritual practice mirrors our physical practice. And in healing, most healing happens from cleaning out the gut first, physically. A lot of issues stem from gut issues, right? And that's really a mirror for the spiritual as well, is knowing that intuitively, when something isn't feeling right, what is that? It's just taking time to enter the body. And usually eliminate thoughts and create more space within. And breath is like a filter. When we take time to sit with ourselves, as I said yesterday, we are seeing rather than seeking, rather than looking. Yesterday's question was, if you were searching for yourself, where would you go? The conclusion is we don't go. We don't seek, we don't look, we see. Seeing is connected to trusting. When we trust, we don't look beyond. There's a sense of, I'm here now, I'm present. 
I trust and I believe. There's no more research needed. When we're trying to tap into who we are, we're not trying to look for ourselves, but rather see. We're only able to see when the environment around us is quiet because we do not see with our eyes. We see with our ears. Hearing comes before seeing. Even in an infant, you're able to hear voices from the womb before their eyesight develops after they're born. Imagine yourself in, the, in beautiful gardens or somewhere that you really, really enjoy an experience that is physically breathtaking. And then take a speaker and turn heavy metal up to 11 and place it near you as you begin to put an effort to enjoy this visual beauty. And most of the time, it is impossible, or all of the time, it is impossible to enjoy what you're seeing because of the amount of noise. that is happening. What would happen for us to enjoy the visual, we would have to turn off the noise or turn it lower. Our thoughts are what we hear. The louder they are, the more difficult it is to enjoy what we're seeing. So when we struggle, so just like in that visual environment, so if it's a beautiful garden, if it's beautiful gardens or anything like that, if that heavy metal sound coming out of that speaker is loud, what you start doing is, is putting an effort to try to push it away there's effort being put in. So much energy in compressing what is happening rather than stepping away from the speaker. And for most of us, so that's the energy of seeking, right? We seek to enjoy what we're seeing rather than turn down the volume. So as we go through our day, understanding that the thoughts are an accumulation of the experiences that we have in our life that create the noise, that creates a position where we have to put in more effort to lower the noise rather than step away from the noise. there's a little preparation involved. And that preparation is what are we taking in in our day? So like if we would be going on a diet of some kind to enhance our health through food, you would calculate your nutrition and you would look at the plate in front of you and say, this will give me the fuel I need today. It will also make me feel full. It will also make my bowel movements 
go and it will give me the vitamins that I need throughout the day. It will be supportive to my life. For some reason, when it comes to entering our day, we think that everything is welcome. Every experience is welcome and it is fine. A simple concept is social media and scrolling. Every photo we see, every image needs time to process. Every conversation needs time to digest. And if we're doing these, if we have these experiences back to back and stacked, Sometimes we don't have time to even digest all of that. And then we're unsure of what and who we are, right? Who are we at that point? So what we want to do is be mindful of what we're seeking so that we can see. When you have that yearning in the beginning of the day, that energy, it's making sure that we are curating quality experiences for ourselves So that we don't have to put on, turn on that effort knob and create tension to try to see. So usually when we're struggling emotionally, Even with a sense of sadness, there's usually a sense of detachment from our body, our first home. We're searching for home, we're seeking for home, but we are not home. And usually, whatever that sadness is coming from is usually a projection, an external piece rather than an internal piece. It almost is like manipulated. As soon as we come into our body and lower the volume, on the seeking, we are able to see. So as you walk through your day today, I want you to take the time to notice when you begin to yearn and seek and look rather than just to simplify and just allow things to be exactly what they are in the seeing component. Because there's no effort needed. As soon as there's effort being put on the table, there's usually an external factor coming in rather than a supportive internal factor. We, so we always want to come from deep within and make sure that we are comfortable at all times. Thank you so much for joining me in this practice. I'm Esther, and this is a Ujjayi self 
hair practice. So it's sponsored by Ujjayi Inc. Have a wonderful day.